When you do a flush or a pressure test, you want to notify the community ahead of time and kind of give a rough estimate of how long you will be doing the maintenance on the on the water line. So some of the equipment that will be that would be used would be a diffuser. So you hook this up to the fire hydrant. You could hook it up directly, but try to support it because it is pretty heavy. You don't want to ruin the, the hydrant nozzles or the threads. So you can use this to kind of redirect the water flow from the hydrant. So you can hook up a hose extension from the hydrant, hose extension, and you can have this kind of in a ditch further away. And with this diffuser, it has a dechlorination um, option. So with this cap right here, you would add these, these dechlorination tablets. Be sure to read all the safety procedures. Little discs like this that you add to here. And then the water flows and this dechlorinates, so it takes out the chlorine of the water that you're flushing from the hydrant out to the environment. So with the, this diffuser, you can also hook up a pressure gauge and you can get some idea of the pressure coming out because in here it's a small pitot which is kind of like this so this is in there like that some of the other pressure testing equipment we can use you can hook this up to the nozzle or the port of the fire hydrant and get a static pressure of the hydrant we'll hook these up to the hydrants to demonstrate this one would work along with this nozzle that you hook up to the fire hydrant and you have to physically hold this in the stream of water and then you'll get a reading, pressure reading. So with this one, you have to plan to get wet. So, but as an operator, you shouldn't be scared to get wet. And this one is a smaller pitot that you hook up to the actual thread of the fire hydrant. So the nozzle part would be here and the flow would hit this and give a pressure reading. We're going to hook up some of these flow and pressure gauges onto the hydrant. So before we start, we want to make sure all these other caps are tight, but not over tight. And we're going to be using this port, so we'll remove the cap. But before you do any pressure testing, we're not going to open it, but it's good to open it and flush out for just a couple seconds so that just in case there's any grit or anything, you get that out of the way. So once you do flush it, close it up again. And with this, you're going to get uh, the static flow of the fire hydrant. It's good to use a little bit of uh, food grade grease so that the threads do not get uh, locked together. So with the threads, uh, this might not be orientated properly but you would make sure that's on tight. Open the hydrant fully and bleed out some air. Water's gonna shoot out with some pressure, so beware. And then you could record the static a pressure in PSI or gallons per minute. So again, with the pressure test, you're gonna use two hydrants. So there's a hydrant just down the line there. You can have the static pressure gauge on here and then if we were at that hydrant, we would use the PITO flow gauges. So I'll quickly hook that up and then we'll have a look. The flow would be coming through here and you use this gauge and put this in the stream of the water coming out and you will get a reading of PSI or gallons per minute. So that's one way that you use a PITO to determine flow. And here's another way, you can use this smaller pito and hook up to the actual threads. So have that installed first and then open your hydrant and you should get a reading of a pressure. 